Welcome to LFA's video on granulation. There are three reasons to granulate your formulation. One, to improve the flowability of your formulation. Two, to make your formulation more compressible. And three, to ensure a consistent spread of API throughout the formulation. One way to test if your tablet formulation needs granulation is to check your formulation's flowability. A way to do this is to test the angle of incidence. A small angle on the powder will show good flowability, meaning it's suitable for direct compression. A high angle means your formulation may need granulation as it would not flow well and may potentially cause arching, bridging or rat holing within your tablet press. We have a video on the angle of incidence which we'll link in the description below. Direct compression. In tableting, sometimes your tablet formulation needs neither dry granulation or wet granulation and can be directly compressed. This is the most cost efficient process within tableting. Your API and your excipients needed are taken and added to a mixer. Once blended, they can be compressed in your tablet press with no further steps. This is a great option for sensitive APIs that may be sensitive to both heat and moisture. However, it needs to be mentioned that you should consider mix validation to ensure your tablet formulation has been mixed the correct amount and not too much. Please see our video on mix validation in the description below. Granulation. Granulation is the process to produce larger granules, remove fines and to improve the flowability within your formulation. There's both wet granulation and dry granulation. But before granulation, you first have to complete your formulation, including both API and excipients minus the lubrication. Dry granulation is a combination of granules without the need of any liquid. Dry granulation is generally used if your formulation is sensitive to moisture or heat. Let's look at slugging, which is using your tablet press to form large tablets that vary in weight due to poor flowability of the formulation. The slugs created are then put through your granulator to be broken down into granules and then compressed once again for your final tablets. Whilst reading about dry granulation, you may have also heard of roller compaction. Roller compaction is where your formulation is fed through a roller compactor. Your mix is fed through the top hopper, where two rollers will compact the powder to form a ribbon. This would then pass through a granulator where the powder is forced against the mesh, which creates the granules of the desired size. Whilst being one of the most complex forms of granulation, Wet granulation is one of the most popular due to it being applicable to most formulations with the purpose to cause aggregation of particles. The adhesive, usually called a binder, is incorporated in the form of a solution or suspension in a suitable liquid. The liquid should be non-toxic and is preferably water, although other solvents are sometimes used. The fluid bed granulator is one of the easiest forms of wet granulation as it all happens within the same unit. Hot air is fed into the bed lifting the granules whilst they are sprayed. The granules bind together to form bridges between themselves. The initial phase of wet granulation is the spraying of the granules. The spray rate is dependent on your formulation. Next is the wetting of the powder, begins to form liquid bridges between the granules. The process is continued until the required size granule is formed with solid bridges between the granules. Once complete, your granules will go to the drying process. The spraying process is turned off and the hot air will continue to flow through the bed drying the granules. There's many different machines and processes for wet granulation such as fluid bed granulators, planetary mixer granulator and rapid high shear granulators. After both wet and dry granulation, milling is needed to delump and create a standardized granule distribution. After milling, complete your final blend whilst adding lubricant. The lubricant is added after to coat the final granule which allows the formulation to flow easier through your press. Whilst LFA doesn't supply all of the equipment mentioned in this video, we do have a list of recommended suppliers that we would be happy to put you in contact with. For more information on anything covered in this video or questions about the equipment, please visit us at www.lfamachines.com or contact us via the information in the video description below.